swan mussels. Can you mourn for a mussel or feel compassion for a clam? For me, these are questions that arise each autumn if the weather has been dry over the summer and I pay a visit to one of the local mill pools, which were created several centuries ago to provide water to drive mill wheels. The wheels are powered hammers at for the wheels powered hammers at forges along the North Worcestershire brooks, allowing their owners to make agricultural implements. But now, with one exception, they are silent, the pools undisturbed. Most of them sit over porous red sandstone and without artificial topping up, their water level soon drops in rain-free autumns, leaving a shoreline of crusting mud and some of our largest British shellfish high and dry. The evidence is here today as I skirt one pond. Dozens of huge olive yellow swan mussels, their hinged shells gaping in the exposed mud in a silent cry for help. For these mollusks it is too late. Having settled down in their chosen position many years ago, they are mainly stationary. Though they have a muscular foot to pull them along, they often fail to reach deep, deeper water when the pond shrinks. But seeing them, even in extremis, reminds me what extraordinary creatures they are, far larger than any seashells we're likely to see on the beach. Swan mussels hide nearly all of nearly all their lives in mud. Each soft-bodied mussel is protected by a pair of oval shells up to six inches long. These are lined with pearly a white pearly, pearly white layer of nacre or mother of pearl. They filter minute particles, food particles, through a siphon, which also draws in water from which their gills extract oxygen. Another siphon acts as a waste disposal surface. It's a quiet life, but for swan's youth, mussels' youth is a very different affair. Baby swan mussels start life as little larvae called glochidia, minute free-swimming creatures similar to oyster spats. They hatch in winter from fertilised eggs inside the mussel and are released into the open water by the parent. As they swim, they trail sticky strands which attach themselves to investigating fish. Once they've found a mooring, the young hitchhikers clamp themselves to the fish to form a protective cyst and suck its blood. After several weeks, they have grown vestigial cells and are large shells and are large enough to sink to the pond bed and find their own home in the sediment, far from competition with their parents. This coexistence can be very sophisticated. In North America, American streams, there are mussels that protrude part of their own bodies from their shells to imitate the shape of a fish, complete with eyes and fins. Real fish coming to check it out or eat what they think is fishy prey are showered with the spray of young mussels. But some fish, known as bitterlings, turn the tables on the mussel and use the shell of the living mussel as a nursery for their eggs. For what is easily dismissed as a dull mollusk, the swan mussel leads a complex life which is why I mourn for those marooned in the mud.